Okay, this webinar is chemistry. Okay, so this is chemistry for all of year 10 and all of year nine. So I still have got one or two people asking me whether or not this is for them. Yes, this is for you. Okay, so all of year 10 and all of year nine are doing chemistry simultaneously, regardless of if they are on double science or triple science. Now, year nines, it's not been decided whether or not you're on double or triple. Uh, year 10s, it has been. Okay, plan for today is for us first off to get used to kind of this new format of the new lesson time. So the new lessons are only 45 minutes. Eep. Um, but what we're going to do is, so I've got you on Tuesday and on Thursday. Now that's doesn't leave us a lot of time for setting work between each thing. So if I set work on Tuesday, that means it might be due in on the Thursday. Um, and with everything that's going on at the minute, that, that just seems a little bit harsh. Um, so I think what I'll probably do is any new work that we set, um, I'll do my best to put it on the Thursday session, because then that gives you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, to have a go at that. So that should be a little bit easier. Yeah, um, somebody's just sent through. Thank you for understanding we have a lot of work. Yeah, uh, guys, girls, others, like seriously, I understand. I, I big time understand. You've got to look after yourself and just protect yourself from doing far too much, okay? Mental well-being. Anyway, so whoopsie daisy, we're going crazy already. Let's have a look at what we're supposed to be doing out today. Screen share up my face. Bye bye. So, in terms of you writing things down, um, it is completely up to you how you write this down. Um, the last few lessons we've done as a kind of first one's like um, the storyboard, the poster, the second one was a leaflet. Um, this lesson is more sort of normal lesson notes. Um, you're very welcome to make those as we go now, or you can do it a little bit later. I really don't mind, whatever way suits you best. Okay, so that's the title for today. What we're gonna do first, where does the S stop then? There's obviously plenty of air around us, sort of at ground level. Uh, that's, I'd like to think, pretty obvious. Um, how about going further up? As you climb up a mountain, um, you might have heard the air gets thinner. Um, that's kind of true. It's basically the oxygen content is less the higher up that you go. Therefore, mountain climbers have got to be very careful that they're getting enough oxygen into their body. You might have heard stories about um, football players and athletes going to train in high altitude conditions because what happens then, their body gets used to having less oxygen to deal with. So it makes their respiration processes uh, more efficient and it basically gives them an edge. It's a really cool idea. But then, is there any air up in space? No, space is a vacuum. Okay, so here's an example of uh, the structure of the Earth. Now, on the old specification, you had to know all like the crust, the mantle, uh, the core and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's not on the new spec. Uh, it's still in geography, uh, but it's not in chemistry anymore, which is great because it was a pain in the backside. So here we go. The atmosphere is a layer of gases that surrounds the Earth. It's approximately 15 kilometers thick. And it's the atmosphere that keeps the warmth in and that keeps the oxygen in and all that sort of lovely stuff. Right, cool. Carrying on, carrying on, carrying on. So yeah, so the atmosphere is a layer of gases. That's what keeps us warm. That's what stops other things exploring off into space. Um, really, really useful. Absolutely great. Next. So in our first lesson of this unit, we looked at the composition of the atmosphere and how it's changed over a long period of time. Um, so in theory, you should know this. Um, most of you will have drawn it. And sometimes what I do in lesson is I get people to try and predict what each section is. Now, you lot have done this very recently, so this should be very, very easy. What is the biggest? section please yeah well done everyone lots of people are going for nitrogen nitrogen is n2 
<laughs> yes, the biggest section is blue as well. <laughs> so uh, nitrogen is the biggest section there. About 79% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. Some people think, oh my gosh, that must be the carbon dioxide, because we're always hearing about carbon dioxide and global warming and blah, 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 blah. Um, so people are often a bit surprised that the 79% is not carbon dioxide. What about the 20%? One or two of you are already on a roll here. You've already got it. Yeah. So the 20% is oxygen, which is a capital O with a little two dangling down at the bottom there. Um, so 20%-ish oxygen and the 1%, and lots of people are already beating me to it here, the 1% we just kind of dismiss as others. And it is indeed a yellowish white colour. So about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. Within the others, um, most of it is actually argon. So 0.9% of it is argon. 0.04% of it is carbon dioxide. Uh, the worrying thing is when I started teaching, um, well, when I started teaching, um, it was 0.03%. Um, so I've been teaching, I think, 10 years, maybe just over 10 years. Um, and it was 0.03 and now it's 0.04, which might not seem like a lot, um, but it is having a big effect, which we are going to be looking at later on in this unit. And trace amounts of other gases. So we're talking things like uh, methane, ammonia, water, all that sort of stuff. Where did that nitrogen come from? Now, that is a good question. The nitrogen um, came from the volcanoes. So the ammonia that came out of the volcanoes, so the NH3 that we mentioned a few lessons ago, um, that's where it was uh, from originally, we do believe. And yeah, I'm so glad that you've just said this. Somebody just said, is there really that little CO2? How are we in crisis, though, if that's it? Um, because small changes make a big difference. So question, how do we actually know that the 21% is oxygen? Well, the way that we do this, and we can do this in lesson, um, I never bother doing it because it's boring. So you can see this little equipment here. Um, what you do is you get a Bunsen burner um, and you get some copper in there and a hundred centimeter cube of oxygen in this thing here called, does anyone know what this bit of equipment is called? Gas syringe, well done, yes, this is called a gas syringe. You can use it to collect or deliver a gas. So let's have a look at this little link. So what they do is you light the Bunsen burner and you start pushing the gas backwards and forwards over the copper. So you start with 100 centimeter cubes of air and you push that air backwards and forwards over the copper. Now copper will react with oxygen to form copper oxide. There it is, there's a little cheeky equation just at the top there. So if you keep pushing it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, what you'll actually find is of that 100 centimeter cubed of air that you had, 21% of it will have been used up that 21 percent is now in there in the copper oxide so what you need to write down right now is just a very quick explanation of how this shows that 21 percent of the air is oxygen what is this experiment called i don't i can't remember off the top of my head it's it's the method a method of proving the composition of the air, I suppose. It's the gas syringe and copper heating experiment. I don't know, I don't know if it's got a name. Is this a required practical? Definitely not, definitely not a required practical. Um, but I have seen it come up a few times on exam, so it's worth knowing. So quick summary then. So let's take it to the start of the animation there. So you have a Bunsen burner and you've got copper there in the middle. Little equation here at the top might be really nice to include in your notes that when copper reacts with oxygen you get copper oxide. The word equation or the symbol equation either are fine. You start with a hundred centimeter cubed of air in this gas syringe and zero centimeter cubed in this gas syringe. You push this one down and it pushes that one out and 
this is just forcing the air backwards and forwards over the copper. The copper will react with oxygen. So the oxygen is getting absorbed into here and forming chemical bonds with that. And the bit that is lost, so you lose 21 centimetre cubed of the copper because of the oxygen, because it's absorbed and it's reacted into the copper oxide. Left with 79 centimetre cubed of gas left at the end. And that would be a calculation for it. OK, so fair enough. We know that 21% is oxygen based on this. Um, but how do we actually know that the 79% is nitrogen? There's an experiment for that too. OK, so this is... Actually, I'm not going to tell you. Um, does anyone know what this might be? What they've done is got the air, super cooled it, and they're separating it out based on its boiling point and melting point. Can anyone remember a technique for doing that? This here is called distillation. Well done. Lots of people getting that there. That's impressive because that's not particularly obvious from that diagram. So what we've got here is a way to prove that the 78% is actually nitrogen. So what they do is get the air, they cool it down and separate what is in there based on its boiling point. OK, so the nitrogen escapes out the top and the liquid oxygen comes out of the bottom. Now, there is a BBC Bite Size link for that as well, but I'm very conscious that we are running out of time right now. This is just a very quick summary of how this process works. Again, I've only seen this come up, I think, once, um, but the year it came up, it threw a lot of people. So it's the sort of thing that because it threw lots of people last time, um, it might be worth us doing again, because sometimes if people struggle with it once, they bring it up time and time again. So the air is filtered to remove any dust that is present, so carbon particulates. It's cooled down in stages in distillation. Uh, um, you should have done before, I think back in year eight, about fractional distillation. OK, the air liquefies, the water vapour condenses and you get rid of the water basically just by absorbing it onto a bit of paper. Um, it's not exactly paper, it's a, it's a filter with special material. But it's essentially just filter paper. Uh, carbon dioxide freezes at minus 79. So you freeze that, you get that out. The oxygen liquefies at minus 183 degrees. So that's a uh, very flipping cold would be the technical term there. And then you get the liquid nitrogen out as well. When you've collected it, you can measure its volume. And that's where we got the 79% from. That's it for today. So we were just aiming to confirm what the current composition of the atmosphere is and confirm how we know that. OK, the two experiments there, distillation of the air by cooling and the experiment with the copper to prove that the 21 percent was oxygen. OK, that is it for now, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. I'm not setting any additional work from this session. So all that you have to do is just make sure you've got your notes for this. Anyway, big on minions of science, be good. I'll see you another time.